Hello everyone. In this session, we want to talk about storage for a failover cluster using cluster shared volumes. Cluster shared volumes are a new type of storage used only in failover clusters. One of the big advantages of cluster shared volumes is that they can be shared by multiple cluster nodes at a time. Now, this is not normally possible with shared storage. In fact, even different volumes created on the same logical unit number cannot normally be shared by different cluster nodes at the same time. Cluster shared volumes achieved shared storage or shared access of volumes by separating the data from different nodes into VHD files. Within each shared volume, you have multiple VHDs being stored, each used as the storage for a particular role for which high availability has been configured. The CSVs containing these VHDs are then mapped to a common namespace on all nodes in the cluster. So in our cluster here, you can see on every node a common namespace where you have the cluster storage folder on the system drive and you have the subfolders volume 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this exists on every node. Cluster shared volumes are formatted with NTFS format, but they are displayed as CSVFS, or the Cluster Shared Volume File System. Let's take a look at how we would create a clustered shared volume using failover cluster. Within failover cluster manager, we want to expand the cluster. We we'll click on the cluster to expand it. And then we want to click on storage. Expand storage. Within storage, we want to click on disk. Now we want to add some available storage. So we're going to go over to the right hand pane on the disk and we're going to click on add disk. We have here a cluster disk one and a cluster disk two. And we want to add both of them and they have to be selected. Then we can go ahead and click on OK. And now we have the cluster disk 2, the cluster disk 3, and the cluster disk 1. They are all available storage. And we want to make them into clustered shared volume. So we're going to right click on the cluster disk 1. And we're going to click on add to cluster share volumes. And you can see that the assignment now is cluster shared volume. Let's do the same for cluster disk 2. Right click and select add to cluster shared volumes. And we can see the change here. And we're going to do the same for the third disk. Right click and select add to cluster shared volumes. Cluster shared volumes add flexibility and simplify management within the failover cluster. With cluster shared volumes, a single logical unit number can be accessed by different nodes at a time, as long as the different nodes are accessing distinct VHDs on that logical unit number. You are then able to run these roles on any node in the failover cluster. And when the role fails, 
it can fail over to any other physical node in the cluster without affecting other roles, services, or applications hosted on the original node. To really understand how clustered shared volumes work in a failover cluster, it's helpful to look or review how the cluster works without clustered shared volumes. Without a clustered shared volume, the failover cluster would allow access by only one node at a time. So for example, if we have five nodes, which we have here, each node is going to need its own logical unit number or disk. This type of deployment will obviously increase the number of logical unit numbers or disk that would be needed for storage on the cluster. And this makes the management of the logical unit numbers or disk much more complex. In contrast to this, if we're using clustered shared volume, then every single node in the failover cluster will be able to access an individual logical unit number or individual disk. Because a disk will have volumes, and the volumes will have VHD files. And each, D, each VHD file can be mapped back to one node. So each node in the cluster will be able to access the one disk, but still they are sharing the VHD files. Remember, for each node, you have a VHD file, but all the VHD files can be on one volume on a disk. This means that the clustered virtual machines can all fail over independently of one another. So, with the clustered shared volumes, you are now able to reduce the number of logical unit numbers or disk required for your nodes. Instead of having to manage one logical unit number or disk per node, you now can have many nodes using a single logical unit number or disk, and as I said before, can fail over without causing the other node on the same disk to also fail. In this session, we looked at clustered shared volumes in a failover cluster. We took a look at how we would create that clustered shared volume and the benefits of the clustered shared volume within the cluster. This is the end of our session and I want to thank you for listening.